What's up guys? Today we are going to be covering uh, the top roll technique and specifically what to do uh, in failed top roll techniques. So first off we'll just kind of show what a typical top roll looks like. Starts off with a good grip and go ahead on Goes to the outside, leads through the fingers, extends the opponent, targets the weakness, and then it carries on attacking the pronation for really path of least resistance pin. But today we will focus primarily on strap uh, top roll, uh, just for simplicity and uh, it's going there. So we'll get strapped up. And one of the things that happens when you're in a strap is some components become more easily uh, accessible, like your drag and your pronation. But what we're going to cover is what happens when your top roll goes wrong. We're good? Yeah. Okay, so again... Uh, so the first thing when you're when you're setting up your top roll, you want to come up into the person's fingers, get a good grip before you even start. Uh, sometimes you slide the elbow forward to achieve that. Sometimes a little re-grip. Now you for sure have a great position and ready to go. Right to the pad, path of least resistance. Now sometimes uh, it's not it's not going to work. Anytime something doesn't work and you think that you can do a technical readjust, if you're using WAF rule system, I highly suggest taking advantage of the foul that you may have. Just simply lift your elbow and get a restart. In a lot of the professional leagues, they don't allow that. So you may have to do it in following rounds or be very, very fast with your counters to, to make the best decision. So the first thing to go over is inside stops to the top roll okay so um so i'm gonna stop you uh by by attacking the inside so i'm gonna try and top roll and i'm gonna i'm gonna cut there we go so the match is stopped i attacked his pronation so uh if you can stop and get a readjust and you still want to top roll probably one of the best things to do is to is to raise your bottom and move to something we call a low hand top roll. So, uh, yeah. So you'll you'll regrip, but you'll you'll really bring the elbow forward. That's it. And now you don't necessarily need to attack the top of the hand quite as much if you know the person's forcing inside. You can really kind of maneuver the match so that you can get more on the bottom fingers. Ready, go. And that, that may be enough to, to get the job done. Um, but it might not be. So what I would say is if you can get a restart, the most powerful thing you can do against an inside arm wrestler when you cannot take their cup away from them is just to go deeper than they are. So if they're hooking you, you press them. So... If you know that I'm going to hook, set up for the press, and ready, go. And and just the advantage of the bone line uh, can lead to mechanical advantage. Anytime you look at arm wrestling, you think shoulder, hand, and the line that it makes. And anytime the shoulder and the hand makes a line into your opponent's arm, you are doing well. If if your shoulder and hand point into their body, you're not set up for favorable inside position. So that's, that's the best adjustment, but you're going to have to do it early because if you're outside arm wrestling and you get stopped, don't move, ready, go. Typically, your arm is going to be open because you're leading with outside, you're pulling with your bicep, and you may not have the shoulder insurance. So at this point, if you continue to fight, you're probably just going to lose. You're probably just going to lose. <clears throat> so if you feel yourself starting to get defeated, one of the best things you can do is to give it away slightly 
as you shift direction and you try and match them on the inside. Probably ending up in a defensive hook. Think you can do that? Yeah. Ready, oh, ready, go. There you go. The switch, the shoulder comes forward uh, and he will kind of let off the uh, attack on his pronation by bringing his shoulder forward, giving up a little bit of position there and, and attacking my pronation as well, getting his bicep involved, defensive hook. This is a, this is probably one of the simplest ones you can do, probably not the most effective, but it's a great mid-match switch from an outside slightly open to a somewhat open inside technique. Let's, uh, let's switch to uh, a failed outside attack. So on top rolls and I've top rolled as well. So in this case, uh, what's happened is I've taken, I've taken his hand away from him. Again, if you can get a restart, suggest you do so. If not, you're gonna have to be very fast and, or, or make the right adjustment, okay? The, the first thing I would say for, in terms of safety, the best thing you can do is switch from more of an offensive style to more of a uh, slightly defensive post. Okay, so I'll do this one. Okay, so, so instead of me trying to top roll on, okay, if I know that on the top roll, you top roll me, it's gonna go his way. What I might try and do is try and hold on to the post just a little bit longer. And I'll probably be willing to give up my cup a little bit in the process. So ready, go. And I'll hold on to my, hold on to my, my uh, riser as long as possible and hope that he would do what I would call premature, premature rolling. In outside arm wrestling, uh, who's holding on to who is very, very important. So to establish that height is probably the most important thing. And sometimes a stronger arm wrestler will rush through that process and you can catch them and turn the match around. If you, you cannot make that adjustment in time, uh, or if you find yourself too low, uh, one of the best things you can do is switch to a king's move. I'll do this one too. <laughs> My specialty. Uh, so if I try and top roll and I find my, my hand getting taken away from me, I can, I can, I can, a lot of times when you top roll, it's a combination of many things. You're rising, you're, you're cupping and you're rolling all together. But a counter, a successful counter, typically you give things away to maintain another. So I can switch to a king's move from a, from a conventional top roll to a king's move just by giving away my cup more as it gets taken and focus all my energy on the pronation side of things. This is, uh, this is an extremely effective counter to, to stop a top roll. The last counter, you want to do this one flopping? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so the last counter that, uh, that is great, but I would say that you have to know that it's coming. Like if you top roll uh, and things don't go well, you get the restart. See, that's great. Auden, Auden was already had some on, on his side of the table. Absolutely a great place to do this move. But I would not suggest doing flop from from the from the opposite side of the table it it definitely is risky you can do it but the the risk goes up the further you are away from your body um the best way to set up your your flop against a better top roller is to really be uh on it right from the very very beginning force inside try to press and as soon as your wrist starts to go let it go and continue to drive with your shoulder so you want to do it? Yeah. From inside? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you're you're setting up inside, and then you're gonna you're gonna give away and take it ready. Ready, go. <clears throat> it's just that full commitment with the shoulder, and as the hand gets taken, um, yeah, you just carry through with your body. Uh, the last two I talk about are uh, less likely, but absolutely need to be talked about. So uh, a top roll 
can also be stopped like we were showing um, by a king's mover and it's a little bit different feel because it's a very defensive stop so the all the stops that we talked about before were what i would call being uh, offensively overwhelmed so this is a defensive stop so I, I will be a king's mover in this situation so don't move ready go and there's the stop okay now what Auden would have to do to counter uh, a stop like this is they would have he would have to climb over he would have to come up this is the best option against the king's mover is to continue to climb and to climb and to climb you can top roll again you can top roll again climb and top roll top roll to the side top roll top roll yeah climb and then top roll roll it that's it that's it Climb and climb and climb and top roll. Climb, top roll, climb, top roll. And if eventually your hand gets uh, burned out when you're on that position, you can also transition to a press. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I'd say is, again, a defensive uh, maneuver against a good top roller is the flop press. Against this, uh, the best place to be is in a press the flop press is a very powerful move but if you're a top roller and you're facing a, a flop wrist presser um, the flop wrist presser can isolate the arm and use their shoulder and the entire body against the move so i'll be the top roller you're the presser don't move ready go oh flop it flop it that's it yeah right and the flop just fully exposes the arm completely so if you are going to face someone who you know is a flopper and you are a top roller, um, you either must grab them lower and focus heavily on the cup uh, to get them turned over before breaking into any kind of pronation. A flopper is going to like it when you pronate them because it will open up the move for them. So you can either do that if you get a restart, so don't move, ready, go. So I can focus on the drag more. But the most powerful thing you can do is to not expose your arm against the flopper, to stand right with them, and to edge your shoulder right forward in the match and make sure that you still have hand dominance throughout the entire move. That's about it, yeah? So that's, that's, that's pretty much your technical options uh, and typical shortcomings when, when top rolling. Always be climbing. Always be climbing and, and stay massive. Thanks, Arden.